Whether you may want to work in Germany, study in Germany, or simply just live in Germany, or maybe you're just a curious German wanting to know what foreigners think of your country, you're going to want to consider these aspects of life in Germany before deciding to do so. Hey guys, and welcome back to our channel. I am Donnie, and along with my wife, Aubrey, we are two Americans currently living in Germany with our baby sharing all of our experiences living and traveling throughout Europe. Germany is in a transitional period where they are trying to actively encourage foreigners to move to Germany by making it easier to get a visa, easier to start a business over here for foreigners, or even easier to get German citizenship. As someone who has lived in Germany for four years, I can tell you that there are a lot of different aspects that make life in Germany amazing. Of course, at first, when one imagines Germany, they might imagine that life is full of fairy tale towns, picturesque landscapes, and thrilling cultural experiences. Or you may already be aware of some things Germany is world renowned for, like its large economy, its healthcare system, or its good work life balance compared to some other nations. But there are a few things that I believe are underappreciated aspects to living in Germany compared to what I experienced in my life in the US. And that's exactly what I'm gonna talk about today in my video. Beyond first glance, Germany is more than just romance. One of the most exciting aspects of moving to Germany for me was the prospect of learning a new foreign language. When you look online, including in some of our other videos, you will find it often discussed if one really needs to be able to speak German or if one can get by with English in Germany. And to be honest, you're going to get a mixed bag of answers that are often heavily dependent on where one has either visited or lived in Germany. For example, in Berlin, English is widely spoken and even some people get upset that they visit some restaurants in Berlin and the waiters only speak speak English. This honestly makes being fully immersed in a language challenging in Germany at times, but it does make life easier when you need to communicate and you can fairly easily do so in English. However, we've traveled extensively throughout Germany and have found lots of places primarily outside of cities and smaller towns or in general with older generations where English isn't spoken by specific individuals and we did rely on my German to be able to communicate. So the underappreciated aspect to me is the fact that you get the best of both worlds in Germany and it's kind of a sweet spot of comfort and uncomfortableness that you need to learn a language. You can typically comfortably live in Germany knowing that you can fall back onto English if needed, but you will also often get a lot of experiences where you can feel immersed and forced to practice the language so that you can actually learn it. Or there's a very very cool futuristic feeling option that I found from Time Kettle known as the WT2 Edge Translator Earbuds. I really want to show you guys these things. Check this out. So I have my friend Nick here from the US and Nick doesn't speak any German at all. So I'm kind of thinking that these could be a cool little tool for him to be able to understand people who are speaking German to him without ever actually having to learn any German. Okay, so I'm going to first put this in simulation mode. So now I'm just going to speak to you in German and it should speak English into your ear. Kannst du mich verstehen? Yes, I can understand you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Here's auf Deutsch. Möchtest du heute Abend in einen Biergarten gehen? Uh, let's go right now. <laughs> I'm ready to go to the beer garden. Und was möchtest du essen? Probably the Wiener Schnitzel. <laughs> it's impressive. <laughs> That's it's <good>. very impressive. <laughs> I'm speaking to you and you understand it, yeah. Hast du schon einmal ein Wiener Schnitzel? Probiert. No, I have not tried the Wiener Schnitzel and I want to before we go back to America. I needed this a few days ago because trying to order in Munich was almost impossible and I just had to keep pointing randomly and just hope that I was getting the right thing. So these earbuds actually support 40 different languages, including eight languages offline. I actually used to work with Chinese manufacturers. We still had a lot of problems communicating. So now this has got me thinking that this may have been a game changer whenever we were working with them. I'm gonna try this out by putting this into listening mode. Wow, yeah, so this is the real deal, guys. It says, to improve your Chinese every minute of every day, let's order today's news content together. I guess whether you're doing business in a foreign language, or maybe you have friends that speak a foreign language, you're traveling, or maybe you're in a multilingual relationship, this definitely is something that I would recommend because that's amazing hearing how quickly it translates to your ears where you can understand it, and also read it, and then save it so that you can go back later and see what you had spoken about previously. I will leave a link in the description to these Time Kettle earbuds so that you can check them out for yourself. The weather is 
so boring in Germany. But as you would assume from the fact that this video is about the most underappreciated aspects about living in Germany, this is actually a very good thing. You see, normally I start these videos by saying that we are originally from a southern state in the US called Oklahoma and now live in the southwestern German state of Rheinland-Pfalz. So some of these things I talk about in my videos, like this one today, are more specific to these two places and the experiences that we have had in them. And weather is absolutely one of these specific things. So one thing that we have learned about Germans since living here is that they are world champions at complaining and specifically about the weather. Complaining about the weather? Congratulations. Now you're beginning to be real German. You are starting to become more and more Germanized. I don't know what could be more German than complaining about the weather. These are just a couple of comments that I have received on videos in the past where unlike this video, I complained about the weather in Germany. But look, when you are in February, it has been cloudy, gray and rainy for months, it gets dark early and you almost have nothing to look forward to, it'll start to wear on you a little and you'll start to lose perspective that it could be actually worse. But overall, when I look at the weather I came from in Oklahoma, we love the weather in Germany. We have two, now it's growing. Wow, Mary, it's a destructive tornado, now becoming a destructive tornado. A lot of threats that are on the table here and it, it, it doesn't seem like it's slowing down. And in fact, Michael, it seems like it just got a little bit more intense. There are concerns that the long heat wave ahead will have deadly consequences. The ice storms cutting power for upwards of 300,000 people, according to OG&E. More than 24 hours without power, prompting neighbor to reach out to neighbor in panic. Oh, it's coming down. Hit record. Hit record. Oh, it's recording. It's recording. Sure. In Germany, you every once in a while will get a bout of extreme weather and technically tornadoes aren't completely unheard of in Germany, but in Oklahoma, in the spring you have tornadoes and extreme storms guaranteed. You folks in Perry, you've got to get to your safe spot because this storm is producing multiple tornadoes, at least two in the last five minutes. You folks in Perry have got to go to your safe spot. Tornado to my left, on the ground, Tornado on my backside. In the summer, we have extreme heat. J Oklahoma Mesonet site located east of Tulsa ended up with a record breaking heat index of 127 degrees Monday. The fall, well, the fall is actually, actually pretty nice. But then in the winter, we have often extreme ice storms that can be quite destructive. We begin with the deadly ice storm making driving treacherous, cars and trucks spinning out of control on highways. In Germany, we have mild, beautiful springs, mild, cool summers with maybe a few weeks of hot weather that we would never have considered hot before moving here. But now after living here for four years and as our heat tolerance has dropped as low as a German's tolerance for spicy food, it's now hot to us as well. And in the winter, we hardly even get snow in our part of Germany rather than just gray and rain and mild weather. It's super boring, but we love that we don't deal with the extreme ups and downs or the life-threatening, panic-inducing weather of Oklahoma. I would say the weather in Germany, in my opinion, isn't great, but it at least isn't scary and trying to kill you. By the way, Oklahoma actually is very nice and quite cool, so if you ever get the chance, you definitely should take advantage of going and trying and visiting, but also just know that your chances of getting hit by a tornado are quite low. We moved to Germany with a major goal in mind of learning in depth about another culture and their world perspective. What we didn't necessarily expect was how we would be learning from an explosion of cultures, and I think this is a very underappreciated aspect of life in Germany. Of course, when you look at a map of Europe overlaid on a map of the US, we see how concentrated all of these various European countries are, and if we were to generalize all of these countries to one culture, like German culture, French culture, or Swiss culture, we can see how just in the same size of land as the part of the US we are from in Oklahoma and Texas, one could easily visit over 10 different European countries and cultures. And where we are specifically living in Germany in roughly 30 minutes to three hours, we could be in one of five different countries. This also isn't mentioning that we live right next to one of the busiest and well-connected airports in Europe that allows one to jet set and arrive in a completely different culture in just a couple of hours. So because of how close we live to the German border and how concentrated Europe is compared to North America, we can quickly experience and learn from many different cultures, but that might be obvious. The biggest, most important underappreciated thing about living in Germany amongst German culture is that German culture doesn't really exist. Okay, 
There are very general themes that are true across Germany and since reunification, the invention of the internet and mass media, Germany is slowly becoming more similar across the country just like the world as a whole is globalizing. We're all but if you watched our German dialects videos where we had Germans sending clips of them speaking their native German dialect, you will have seen how incredibly diverse Germany is and historically has been. Look at early maps of the region we now know as Germany and you see how up until about 1871, this region was a patchwork quilt of princedoms, kingdoms, tribes, etc. And they all were developing their own cultures, customs, traditions, and of course, clothing. Yes, not all Germans wear lederhosen traditionally like you think. In fact, the definition of leather pants is completely different things between Munich and Berlin. But when you move to Germany, you are not getting just one culture to learn about. You are getting seemingly thousands of not just subtly different cultures, but vastly different cultures. It's kind of like moving to one country expecting to get one culture, but instead it is a 1,000 for one deal, giving you endless amounts of things to discover that goes greatly underappreciated living in Germany, in my opinion. <laughs> Something that often gets a bad rep in Germany is how German Germans are. By that, I mean they are often portrayed as cold, rude, or too direct. Look, I've talked often about how there are sometimes bits of truth in stereotypes, but often stereotypes are exaggerated and should be taken with a grain of salt. However, I will say that Germans definitely are significantly more direct than Americans, and in some ways, even I have found this as a possible con to life in Germany coming from my American cultural norms. But today, I wanna to talk about how this is actually an underappreciated aspect to life in Germany. We've had the privilege of making friends with many Germans over the years, and we of course have also made friends with other nationalities or maintained friendships with Americans from our past, and for sure, one thing Aubrey and I talk about all the time is how much we love and appreciate our German friends' directness when it comes to making plans. So, for example, make a plan with an American and you will spend half the time discussing what you want to do or too much thought will be given into not wanting to step on toes by saying what you actually want to do and you end up doing something that you don't want to do. Or you will ask someone directly if they want to do something and they will respond with, maybe. If they don't want to commit to something or maybe they don't really want to do that thing but they don't have a good excuse to get out of it yet and for some reason in many parts of American culture, it isn't acceptable to just say, actually, I don't want to do that without thinking you will offend someone. For our German friends though, they will just straight up and tell us, I don't want to do that. And it's amazing. <laughs> really, for us, it has been a wake up call to, oh, when our German friends just straight up tell us that they don't want to hang out with us on Tuesday and they would just rather stay at home and rest, that we won't be offended by that and it won't make us any less likely to invite them to hang out the next time, like we often think with Americans. It is such a breath of fresh air that in this case, they just let us know what they are really thinking so that we can move on and make different plans or not waste time, unlike with many American friends where you are left sitting and wondering what they actually want or if they will actually show up to something. Sure, there is a time and a place for directness maybe, and in this case, we very much appreciate the German norm. To see who made it this far into the video, the random question of the week is, do you use spray, stick, or gel deodorant? Thanks so much for watching guys. Be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons and I will see you in our next video. Of course, at first when you, of course, at first when you imagine Germany, they might, of course, at first when one imagines Germany, they just let us know that they, what they are really thinking. Wow, really messed up that part. You're going to want to consider these things before. You're going to want to consider these aspects of life in Germany before.